All right, good morning. Happy Thursday, wherever you are, whatever your day is looking like so far. If you're joining us live, 8 a.m. Central Time, God bless you. If you're joining us later in the day, if you're joining us the next day, it doesn't matter. Uh, God's Word is timeless. Great to see you this morning. Everyone that's joining us, I get so excited when I see names popping up on the screen, people that have been faithful for years. Good morning, Becky. It is great to see you this morning. Hope you're feeling well. The Munsons are in the house. It, it's a full house this morning. If you're not here, you are missing it. If you are not here, uh, man, I tell you what, you need to watch this later. Smiths are in the house. Dennett's in the house this morning. My man Dennett's here. It doesn't get any better than this. All right. Good morning, everyone. We have been walking through the Bible, looking at, at great men and women of faith and identifying character qualities in their life that we need to emulate, that we need to copy. Uh, these are qualities uh, of people that made them successful and great people of faith. So uh, we've been looking at King Solomon, and today is King Solomon Part 4. And uh, today is officially Refuse to Quit Thursday. Today is officially Refuse to Quit Thursday. Remember, Solomon was the wisest man that ever lived. In 1 Kings chapter 3, God comes to Solomon and says, what, what do you want from me? What would you ask of me? And Solomon says, I want wisdom and a discerning heart to lead your people well. And God says to Solomon, because you didn't ask for riches, because you didn't ask for long life, and you didn't ask for victory over your enemies, I'm going to give you all of that and a discerning, wise heart. Solomon was the wisest man that ever lived. The character quality we're looking at in Solomon is wisdom. Now remember, Solomon wrote uh, the, the book of Ecclesiastes, Solomon wrote most of the Proverbs, and Solomon wrote the Song of Solomon. Three books in the Bible, pretty much Solomon wrote. Our verse today is Ecclesiastes. <clears throat> Good morning, Ben. Celebrate recovery tomorrow night is going to rock, my friend. All right, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 7, just one verse, verse 8. Listen to this, friends. Uh, chapter 7, verse 8. Finishing is better than starting. Patience is better than pride. That, that, that's a mouthful right there. That, that's, that's three weeks of sermons right there. Let me read it again. Finishing is better than starting. Patience is better than pride. Finishing is better than starting. There are, there are so many benefits to learning to finish. Finishing is better than starting. Patience, the willingness to hang in there, is better than pride, which says, I don't need this. Patience, the willingness to endure, the willingness to keep going when things get hard. Patience is better than pride, which says, well, I'm just going to quit. I don't really need this, all right? Finishing is better than starting. What happens when you finish? Let me tell you a few things that happens. The benefits of finishing. You become an overcomer when you finish. What does that mean? It means you learn how to win. You learn how to succeed. If you quit, you never learn what it means to win. Almost every basketball team that I coach, we might have had great talent, but they all needed to learn how to win. And that meant hard work. That meant pushing through. That meant not quitting, not giving up on the team, not giving up on themselves. When you push through, uh, you learn to win. When you finish, you learn how to succeed. Second thing is you become stronger when you finish because you have to push through difficulties. You have to learn how to endure things when you finish. You become a stronger person. You become wiser when you finish because you learn so many things along the way that you wouldn't have learned if you would have quit. So when, when you uh, finish, you become wiser. You become a teacher to others when you finish because, because you then you have, have lessons to share with people. This, this is what I did. This is how I finished. This is how I overcame. You become happier when you finish. There's great joy when you cross the finish line. I can't tell you what, what elation I had with both of my daughters when I ran a half marathon with them and when we crossed the finish line. The process, the journey was grueling. There were times when we're, when we're running up hills, we wanted to quit, but we didn't. And then the elation of crossing the finish line, holding hands. I did. We did this. We finished. We didn't quit. Man, you are a happier person when you learn to finish instead of quitting. Uh, you know what happens when you finish? You motivate other people. 
uh, people right now in life that don't think they can go through what they're going through. When you go through and you finish, when you endure and finish, other people want to know, how did you do that? And you become a source of motivation to people in their life that will help them finish. Uh, you, you grow in patience. You know what? Quitters never learn patience. Quitters never learn to endure. Quitters never learn to push through. Quitters never learn to overcome. Quitters never have the opportunity to teach others. Quitters never motivate people. Quitters never learn how to win. Quitters never learn how to succeed. That's why the wisest man in the world said, finishing is better than starting. You know why? Anyone can start. In fact, everyone starts. But not everyone finishes. So the question is, are you going to be a finisher? I'm going to read some scripture. You're going to love these scriptures this morning. Listen to these scriptures. John 17, 4. Jesus speaking. I brought glory to you, Father, here on the earth by completing the work you gave me to do. By finishing the work you gave me to do. Jesus was a finisher. Jesus wasn't a quitter. And therefore, he brought glory to God. Acts chapter 20, verse 24. Paul says, but my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work you assigned me by the Lord Jesus, the work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. Paul was a finisher. Jesus was a finisher. How about one more here? A couple more here. Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. Philippians 3, 13 and 14. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it yet, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past, looking forward to what lies ahead, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize. I press on to reach the end of the race. Friends, are you pressing on today to reach the end of the race? That's what a finisher does. Let's look at a couple more. These are great scriptures. You're going to want to write these down and go over them again. Paul says in, in 2 Timothy 4, 7, 2 Timothy 4, 7, Paul says, where am I? There we go. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race and I have remained faithful. Paul says, I finished the race. I stayed faithful. It was worth it. Now I get the crown of righteousness that was stored. up. No crown of righteousness if you don't finish. There is no reward if you don't finish. Quitters don't get a reward. Come on, somebody. How about one more of this one? You're loving these scriptures, aren't you? How about 2 Chronicles chapter 15? 2 Chronicles chapter 15. I thought I had it marked here, but we'll find it. 2 Chronicles 15, verse 7. Here we go. But as for you, be strong and courageous, for your work will be rewarded. Don't quit. Your work will be rewarded. Amen? Now, listen, let me tell you this. Parents, make your kids learn to finish. Don't let your kids quit. Don't let them quit teams. Don't let them quit classes. Don't let them quit commitments. Don't, make, don't let them quit obligations because you're going to teach them to win. They will love you later if you teach them, if you force them to finish. Don't let them quit. That's the worst lesson you can ever teach your, quit, your kids is you can be a quitter. No, don't. The, Jesus was a finisher and he was a winner. Paul was a finisher and he was a winner. All, all of the apostles, they were finishers in life. Amen? Come on. Today is officially refuse to quit Thursday. So let me ask you this morning, as we, before we pray, what have you started that you're tempted to quit? What have you started that you're thinking about not finishing, but you need to finish? How about your marriage? Don't quit on your marriage. How about, how about your education? Are you in college? Are you struggling? You'd rather just get out and, and find a job? No, don't, don't quit. Learn to finish. Maybe you started a book like me, and, and then you, you read a third of it, and then you jump onto something. No, 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 finish. My daughter's all over me right now about this book, Atomic Habits, Habits that I'm supposed to finish, and I'm working my way through it. She's she keeping me accountable. I'm going to finish the book, right? Be a finisher. Do you, have a, do you start a book? Finish it. A, a program or a class that you started, finish it. Don't quit. A diet plan, a fitness plan, don't quit. Finish it. See it through to the end. Uh, a Bible study. Did you start a Bible study? Now you're ready to quit? Finish it. Uh, fulfilling a promise to your kids. Did you tell your kids you'd do something? Show your kids you're a finisher. Show your kids that you're, you don't start something, say you'll do something, and then you don't follow through. Maybe um, a commitment to church. Maybe a commitment to Kids Central. Maybe you made a commitment to teaching Sunday school, and, and, and you know, all of a sudden the weather's warming up. And the, no, make your, finish your commitment. If you made a commitment, finish it. 
Don't be a quitter. Follow through with your commitments. Um, a, a commitment to help someone with something. And then you get busy and it's like, well, I don't know. If you made the commitment, finish the commitment. Don't quit on the commitment, all right? How about, how about a recovery program? Celebrate recovery. Tomorrow, if you made a commitment to recovery, if you made a commitment to get your life together, don't quit. Don't finish that. See it through all the way to the end. I cannot tell you how many times in 12 years I was ready to give up and quit at Central. I was ready to move on to something else. I can't, several times, a number of times, and I didn't. And, and people encouraged me to push through. You get your feelings hurt. You don't feel valued. You feel like, you know, you know the structure isn't what fits you well. And, and you know what? Sometimes you do need to leave organizations. I'm not saying you never leave an organization. I'm saying there were a lot of times I felt like leaving Central. And I, I tell you what, greatest decision I ever made was to finish, to keep going, to push through. Man, I'm seeing the fruit of what God is doing in this church. It's exciting to, to be able to hang in there, to endure through the difficult times, to overcome, to see the blessings that God has. Some of you aren't going to see the blessings if you quit. Hang in there. Endure. Learn to overcome. Be a winner. Finish it. Teach your kids to finish. They will love you later in life. They may not like you right now. They will love you later in life if you teach them how to be winners, if you teach them how to overcome. Come on. Don't let them quit. Let's pray this morning that God will give us the strength, the grace, and the endurance to finish what we started. Lord Jesus, we, we read this morning that you finished the work. You hung on the cross, and what did you say on, on, on Good Friday? What did you say? You said, it is finished. I finished. Paul, Paul said, I've run the race. I finished the race, completed the course, and now I get the crown. Amen. Lord, I pray today in big things and small things in our lives. The wisest man in the world said, finishing is better than starting. That's our commitment today, Lord. Help us to endure. Help us to finish. Help us to be strong. Help us to overcome. In the name of Jesus Christ, and everyone said, come on. Everyone said this morning, I am an overcomer. I am a finisher. I'm not one who starts. I'm one who finishes. Be wise today, friends, like King Solomon. Finishing is better than than starting, and you're a finisher. You're not going to quit. God's going to give you the power to keep going. All right, I went a little long today, but you're going to have a great Thursday. It's Refuse to Quit Thursday. We'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless you.